I really love this chapter. I love the kind of like two sections. You know, the first one uh, is talking about there's a to everything there's a season, and then the second part talking about the beast and everything. And there's so much you can preach from this. I always remember the time I was preaching a series through the book of Ecclesiastes in Iola, and there's a guy who had been coming f f somewhat faithfully for a little while, and um, he said, uh, or I, so I preached a message on Ecclesiastes. We're in chapter three. And the message was, there's a time to hate. That's not what I'm preaching tonight, but uh, there's a time to hate. And I went through the whole Bible showing verse after verse about how the Bible clearly says there is a time to hate. And, uh, you know, I was not being ugly about it or not like some great desire to just be hateful and mean and stuff like that. Not, that wasn't the point of the message at all. But after the end of the message, we we're getting ready to leave. And he walked by and he said, I, I just disagree with you. And I was like, oh, about what? He said, I just don't think there's ever a time to hate. And I was like, well, I just preached a whole message. I showed you a lot of verses in the Bible, what the Bible says. And he said, yeah, but I just don't believe it. And I was like, okay. <laughs> you either believe the Bible or you don't believe the Bible. But uh, uh, this is a man's words. This is Solomon's words, but under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. But it's backed up in so many uh, scriptures about that. But anyway, it has nothing to do with my message tonight. The message tonight, which might seem a little strange at first, is about being wasteful. Being wasteful, we're going to spiritualize that a little bit here in a minute. But I went in two different directions in my mind, like how exactly I wanted to preach this, because number one, we understand the negatives of being wasteful. And uh, so I want to spend a, t a little bit of time talking about that, but the actual message is going to be uh, being wasteful in a positive light, okay, which might be a little strange here for a second. Uh, but wasting time. All right. Wasting food. Does that bother anybody? That bothers me. <laughs> Wasting uh, money. These are th negatives that we think about uh, that we all might be guilty of it from time to time. Uh, I think about time wasters. You know, there's a lot of things uh, you could try to use some of these things and, and make them where you're uh, you know, you're multitasking or whatever so that you're not wasting time. But ultimately, these types of things become time wasters. If we're not careful and we're not using it uh, correctly, uh, you know, how, how about watching YouTube videos, right? I remember telling, you know, when we first, uh, there was a time, do I need to do anything here? Okay. Uh, when we first switched over, this is going to date me a little bit, I'll tell, tell you how old I am. But when we first switched over to TVs where they went digital, <laughs> you know, and, uh, and, uh, you know, a lot of people, uh, were having to pay for this new service and also they can have television, uh, channels. And we said, we're not going to do it. TV doesn't really have anything good for us. It's not profiting us anything anyway. So we're just not going to do it. And so for years, I remember telling people, well, we don't actually watch TV. And they thought we were super spiritual. But what I meant is we don't actually watch things on the television. We still watch movies <laughs> when, we, when we bought them. And nowadays, it would be real easy to say, like, we don't even have a TV. But almost everybody watches YouTube videos or something like that. And, and sometimes it can become a time waster if you're not careful. Or Facebook, spending hours and hours on Facebook. I'll tell you what's a time waster. Trying to debate with some people on Facebook about certain things. It's like you're just like talking to a brick wall. Okay, the time waster. And your time can probably be better spent somewhere. These are things uh, that we are, it's a negative that we have to be, be cautious of and be thankful, thinking about. Wasting food. This is an interesting one to me. Like, you know, I typically put a lot of food on my plate and sometimes still go back for <laughs> seconds. But I usually put a lot of food on my plate. But, you know, have you ever noticed kids? They don't have any discretion, and sometimes they'll put like way too much on their plate, and there's no way they're ever going to eat eat that. Uh, but sometimes they do that, and uh, ends up a lot of times being thrown away or something like that. What's funny is you know you, you, you probably did your parents ever say like, hey, they're starving kids in Africa. You know, use that on you whenever you waste food. They're starving kids in Africa. Of course, I remember as a kid thinking, well, how's this going to help the starving kids in Africa <laughs> if I eat all my food? Uh, but here's what's funny about that. First time I had a interaction with a guy from Africa, right? This is when I felt like I was calling to the Gambia, West Africa. And, and I met with this guy and we sat down. I took him out to all you can eat buffet. No particular reason. That's just where we ended up. And he filled his plate just, and he took like five bites and ended up like just leaving the whole thing. 
<laughs> it was like a Chinese restaurant or something like that. And I thought, oh, there are starving people in Africa. <laughs> and years later, we went to youth camp, you know, teen, uh, the teens, and, and there was this kid. Uh, he was from Africa. I don't know why he was here, if he was like a foster kid, or I don't know, the, maybe they just moved here. But he ended up in somebody's church. They brought him to camp. And uh, he, he, was, he was African enough that he had, there was a language barrier. You know what I mean? Does, does that make sense? Like he hadn't been here that long. He was still having a hard time speaking the language and everything. But we went through the lunch line when it was time to eat. Same thing. Filled his plate up, took a few bites, and just threw, threw the rest away. So I thought that was pretty ironic because even though in our culture we eat a whole lot of food, uh, there's, this is just not a, it's not just a cultural thing in the United States. I think people, when they have the luxury to eat a lot of food, they're just same as water. You know what I mean? There's some countries where water is so precious and they got to be really conservative. How many of you guys like leave the water running? The whole, I, I thought about this one day. I'll leave the water running the whole time I'm brushing my teeth. <laughs> and like a little bit later, I'm like, man, I just wasted a bunch of water that for no reason. But you know, that's kind of how we do when we're living in luxury. We don't think about those things. I remember a time uh, at the at this place I worked in uh, Springfield, Missouri, when I was going to college out there, and it was a it was a first I should say this it was a uh, clean environment. So like uh, we had to clean it constantly, and it was it was controlled environment. I think is the word controlled weather, controlled you know everything's clean there, air filters and all that stuff because we made circuit boards, and. Uh, it sounds really cool. Like I know something about, I don't know anything about, computer, but I knew how to program the machine to drill the holes. And then you just watch it drill holes for a while and hopefully it doesn't break any drills and, and you change, change the table out and all that. Well, this lay, I remember it's super, everything's clean. You're clean like five times a day because you get bored. You don't know what to do. It's just time to clean everything again. Everything was like super clean. Well, this lady came in with a, with a, I don't know, uh, some kind of fast food, whatever. She had this big old juicy hamburger. And I remember thinking, oh, that looks good. I was really hungry, college student, you know. <laughs> and, uh, and she was talking and she's walking by and she dropped it. And it fell on the floor on one side, one bun, one side. And she said, oh, now I got to throw it away. She threw that in trash. I was like, what are you doing? First of all, I would have picked it up, eating it, eating it just like that, <laughs> the way that it was. But even if you don't want to do that, throw one bun away and eat the rest. You know, I just couldn't believe what a waste. What a, but anyway, I, I'm more concerned about wasting food than, <laughs> than all these other things, it seems like. <laughs> anyway, wasting money. Here's a, here's a big one. It has become so easy for me. It's not like I'm rich and have just a ton of money, but it's become so easy out of convenience to go to the convenience store and the, uh, uh, otherwise known as the gas station and pay way too much money for a drink or a snack, you know, than what, you know, we could have just, I could have got something from the house, take a banana with me or whatever, uh, make some coffee at the house. How about wasting money? Go to a coffee shop, you know, and I like coffee. You guys know I like coffee, but you can pay four or five bucks easily for a coffee at a coffee store. I don't know how much I just paid it at Panera Bread earlier, <laughs> but uh, I'm not saying, you know, we, we just have these things in our life where we need to work on them sometimes and be less wasteful because we understand just, just looking at things the way they are, wisdom says you shouldn't be wasting things, okay? Look at Proverbs 18 and hold your place in Ecclesiastes. We'll come back to that. Proverbs 18 Verse 9, Proverbs 18, verse 9, He also that is slothful in his work is brother to him that is a great waster. He that is slothful at work is brother to him that is a great waster. So you can see like the person that's, that's slothful and lazy, right, that person is you know, simpatico with those who are just a great waster. Now, here's an interesting thing. You start looking up what it means to be a waster. And all through the Bible, you can look this up for yourself. Uh, in fact, uh, let me just read this one to you. In Galatians 1.13, it says, For ye have heard of my conversation in time past in the Jews' religion, how that beyond measure I persecuted the church of God and wasted it. 
And most of the times in the Bible, you read the word waste, it's saying like they went into the city and they wasted the city or the, the, or the city will be waste, you know, will be turned to waste or whatever. So waste has to do with being destroyed, being stripped of all the resources or whatever. And, uh, and it has to do with destruction. Okay. So the applications there, obviously wasting, you know, what your substances, whatever, you know, and being lazy and being slothful is, is, is the same as, as being wasteful. But listen to this. If you think about it, wasting is very destructive in many ways. When you waste something, what you're actually, you're destroying something rather than uh, building up. Okay. When you waste time, for instance, you could be stealing from somebody. But let's say somebody's waiting. They got an engagement. They're waiting on you and you're, you know, this is something we all going to work on. I know I do. And you're running way behind. And that's per that person that's waiting for you is like, you know what I could be doing right now? I could be getting accomplished, but you're actually stealing that person's time. That could be if you, uh, you know, wasted a bunch of time. And so now you're late is what I'm getting at. Or uh, you can't get as much done as you could have because you spent all this time wasting. And so now you could be stealing from your employer or your family or, or somebody that's waiting on you, whatever. If you think about it, when you waste food or resources or whatever, you could be stealing or robbing from your family. You know, you could be uh, spending that money, you know, differently. You could be that food could go a lot farther. You know, I had to throw a, <laughs> speaking of wasting food just before we came here, I had to throw a big old thing of cottage cheese away because my wife buys stuff like that, that I'm the only one in the house that eats it. And it gets pushed in the back of the fridge and you forget about it. And so whenever you're like, oh, I didn't know that was in here, you open it up and it's molded. Oh, I hate wasting food. Uh, because, <laughs> but that's just uh, what we do. And you're thinking, man, it, I mean, cottage cheese isn't a whole lot of money, but I'm just saying like, you know, what, you know, that, what a waste. We could have, you know, bought something else or, or whatever. You get the, you get the picture. We'll go back to Ecclesiastes 3. <clears throat> and I was thinking about this. Uh, this concept of to everything there's a season, all right? And it says there's a time uh, to every purpose under the sun, a time to be born, a time to die. And it goes through this list of different things. Okay, verse 2 talks about a time to pluck up that which is planted. All right, I'm looking at the negatives, specifically looking at the negatives. Uh, verse 3, there's a time to break down. Okay, verse 5, there's a time to cast away. Verse six, there's a time to lose. These all sound like uh, like bad things, right? We should always want to, uh, you know, uh, build up things. It seems like you know. So you know, here's an example. If you really, if you're into like plants, planting things, uh, you know, I remember when Zachary first had a desire, like he just liked plant. He liked gardening and, and, and trying to plant things. He still to this day has a bunch of plants in his, in his room. Most of them are brown, but, <laughs> but he's got a desire to, and, and here's one of the things that I've noticed about him is he doesn't like pruning anything off. He doesn't like, cause he feels like, Hey, I'm, 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 I'm going to kill it. Right. If I, if I prune it, if I get rid of these things, I'm going to, but you know, a gardener knows that there's a time to cut off. There's a time to pull up some things. You're like, oh, no, but that's a beautiful weed. Yeah, but that weed's going to kill the good plant. You know what I mean? So yeah, there's a time to pluck up. But we think in our head, oh, no, 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 we should never pluck anything up. Well, yeah, there is a time to do that. There is a time to break down. You're like, oh, no, no, don't break it down. You know, just keep on fixing it. Keep on uh, building up. And too, look, there's a time that if you break it down, uh, you know, you can build something better or whatever. You know, there's a there's there is a time that you need to break down. It's a good thing. There's a time to cast away. You know, you think, oh, no, we don't want to throw that away. That'd be a terrible thing. And so the next thing you know, your house becomes cluttered. Uh, nothing's working. You can't find the things that you're looking for. Hey, there's a time to cast things away, <laughs> right? Uh, because it'll actually be better for you. All right. There's a time verse six says to lose, right? That doesn't sound like, sound like a good thing, but the Bible says there's a time to do these things. So what about wasting? You know, is it, could you ever be some, a good way to be wasteful? 
And I want to submit to you that I think it is. And I think, in fact, the Bible has a lot of great examples of wastefulness. All right. Now you'd look at it in the long run and say, well, it's not wasteful. Of course, that's the point. But uh, but you would look at that uh, from a surface view and say, what a waste. You know, and I want to show you that there uh, the Bible teaches us that there are uh, times to be wasteful. OK, and that might sound a little uh, counterintuitive at first, but we'll look at those. OK, so first of all, the first point I want to make is this. Uh, it is good to be wasteful when it is going to be more profitable for us afterwards. OK, so in the well, I'll get back to uh, comparing some of those things from Ecclesiastes 3 in a minute. But here's an example investing right investing would mean you spend money on something so that it can make more money the principle is oh no no don't waste your money on that but the but what you're i mean i mean the idea is the natural tendency is don't waste your money on that but the principle is you you spend the money on that so that down the road it'll it'll yield better investments now i'm not talking about gambling <laughs> okay gambling is not investment <laughs> if you're gambling uh, that's wrong because you're saying, hey, I really want to make a lot of money. And so I'm just going to throw caution to the wind and just play my cards and, and wish for good luck and, and hope that, you know, when I throw my money at that, it'll come back and it'll end up being a good thing. And look, some people do win the lottery. Some people do uh, go out to the casino and end up winning big. But most of the time, it ends up leading to a terrible lifestyle and it leads to a whole lot of waste, negative waste that nothing good comes from it. In fact, even if somebody wins, what happens is then they get a gambling addiction and they're like, hey, if I won once, I can win again. And then you know how that how that plays out. It never ends up being good. And so that's not what we're talking about, but but theoretically, the, the idea of investing, you know, like I'm not big on stocks and all that kind of stuff, but the idea of investing is you put that money aside or put it towards something, what you can afford to, to put there, and it becomes more, you know, that's the idea. Now, obviously, I would suspect not many of us are involved in uh, uh, a whole lot of investing, uh, probably. No, there might be somebody, but but that's the principle, okay? Um, now, how about this? It's never a waste of time. This I, I love this quote here because it's very true, and I have to remember this sometimes. But it's never a waste of time for a lumberjack to sharpen his axe. You ever heard that? It's not a waste of time. If you watch a lumberjack, like someone who's cutting down trees with an axe, you ever tried that? It's difficult. When someone's cutting down trees, big old trees with an axe, what they're going to do is they're going to stop every once in a while and they're going to sharpen that thing. And now somebody could look at that and say, hey, you're sitting down sharpening your axe, you're wasting time. You could be just, you know, banging away at that tree so you can, you can cut it down. But the thing is, in that time that was wasted, it wasn't wasted at all, of course, in that time that was wasted, sharpening his axe, the job's going to get done better. Uh, I was convicted when I started writing this down that we need to sharpen our lawnmower uh, blade. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> It'll do a whole lot better in the long run if we'll just stop and take the time to do that. Here's a couple of other examples. In Army, I've brought this illustration up a lot, it seems like, lately, because uh, there for a little while I was just, for whatever reason, I was drawn to uh, the idea of training, how our military train. Well, I know what started me down that rabbit hole, but anyway, it wasn't a time waster because I'm using it right now. <laughs> okay. An army, it would seem like in boot camp, in training, you know, all these, that they're wasting a lot of things. Go to the shooting, shooting range. You know, when we went out with the men's uh, camping trip and we went out and shot, you look around at all those uh, bullets uh, or, or the shells and, uh, and you're like, man, what a waste. I mean, we just, shot all this stuff and waste it wasn't wasted because it was training i mean i'm not training for whatever but i'm just saying uh, that's how the army is they, they they go through a lot of resources you know what are you doing eating the mres uh you know that's packaged for specific you know emergency use only why are you because they got to learn these things like, and, and later on down the road it's going to be useful to them uh or how about these tedious ridiculous jobs. My dad was in the Marines, so we went on some, we were on a lot of military bases. We went even to uh, some of the places where they did boot camp training and, and all that. And I'm telling you, they will have, if there's nothing to do, you know, uh, uh, military, like the, the, the leader will, I can't think what commander or whatever, will tell the guys to do some of the most ridiculous jobs. 
I'm talking about you've, you've already you've heard of the scrubbing the toilets with a toothbrush. I mean, why don't you give them something better than a toothbrush, right? Oh, what a waste. A toothbrush is going to take you forever, right? But there's a reason for that. There's something that they're training them to do. You know, here, here, go mow the yard with a pair of scissors, right? What a waste. Give me a lawnmower. There's a reason, right? They're giving these tedious jobs and they're making them obey and they're making them do all this stuff. And you say, what a waste. Okay, it's not wasting, or let me put it this way. It's right to be wasteful if in the end it is going to lead towards something good. Now, again, these this first point, I guess you could say it's not really wasting, so uh, it wouldn't seem to fit. But, uh, but I wanted to bring that up because it's very true. Sometimes you feel like, oh, I'm wasting. This is waste. This is not good. But you have to look at what it's going to do in the, long, in the long haul. All right. Doing foundational work. Uh, I guess you know, some, most of you guys know, I've been trying to uh, do some body work on the Suburban and I'm not a body mechanic. I don't know anything about that. In fact, I'm learning, I'm having to learn patience because if you have never looked into what it requires to repaint a vehicle, you know, first you got to pull the dents, then you got to sand it down, then you got to use filler, then you got to sand that filler. But look, that's not enough. It's still misshapen. So you got to go put some more filler. Then you got to sand that down. Once you finally get it where you think it sanded good and you clean it all up and you tape off the windows and you tape off the mirrors and everything is all taped up and then you spray it with some primer, that primer reveals that you didn't do enough sanding the first time. So you got to go sand it all again. <laughs> and then you got to put some more primer. And I'm telling you, man, somebody's like, oh, it looks like you did a good job. I'm like, don't get close because <laughs> it is not right. So I'm, I'm learning to do that. So the time that you put into the prep work that seems like a waste, it's going to save down the road. It's going to really help you out if you'll do that first. And you're like, oh, I'm just wasting time, burning daylight. I need to get the paint on there. No, you need to first do the prep work. Do you understand? So there's a lot of ways that we can look at that and say uh, being wasting time isn't really wasting time at all. Okay. So point two. Uh, and so, you know, the, the application there was we need to not be afraid of spending our time, energy, resources, whatever, if it's going to lead to a greater accomplishment in the long run. Very important that we understand that investing aspect. Number two, when is it right to, uh, to waste? When we are giving our time, energy, or resources to the Lord. Now, what do you mean by that? What do you mean by waste? Look at John chapter 12. You probably know this story, know where I'm going. John chapter 12. And no, this isn't a plea for, oh, just give everything you got, put it in the offering plate. That's not, that's not my point. But my point is when you are giving to the Lord, you can't waste. It's not waste. It's, it, it, you can give uh, abundantly. You can give uh, what seems to others to be wasteful. You can give it. Look at John chapter 12. I just preached this a while back. I was preached a message called Beautiful Feet, and we ended up talking about this. So a lot of these stories keep recycling themselves. <laughs> then Jesus, six days before the Passover, came to Bethany, where Lazarus was, which had been dead, whom he raised, up from, raised from the dead. There they made him a supper, and Martha served. But Lazarus was one, uh, was one of them that was at the table with him. Then took Mary a pound of ointment and, of spikenard, very costly, and anointed the feet of Jesus and wiped his feet with, the, uh, with her hair. And the house was filled with the odor of the ointment. So she just put this whole pound and just poured the whole thing out and uh, poured it on Jesus' feet, wiped it with his hair. I think probably anointed his head too, if you compare uh, the gospel accounts. Verse 4 says, Then said one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, which should betray him. He want to make sure we understand who this man is and what his motives were. Why was not this ointment sold for 300 pence and given to the poor? This he said, not that he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief and had the bag and bear what was put therein. I'm telling you, when you do something for the Lord and it seems wasteful, it seems like you spent a lot on that. It seems like you put a lot of into, into that that seemed unnecessary. There's always going to be people that say, you could have done better things with your money than that. You know, you could have done, uh, you, you could have, you, you could have fed the poor. You could have, you know, you get these kind of accusations all the time, especially as church, as churches, uh, in churches, they get these 
to these uh, accusations that they're being wasteful. But the truth is, if you're giving to God, it's not, it's not wasteful. All right, so you're giving your resources. That's a good thing. Now, look, I'm not saying be unwise. You still got to take care of your, your family and your life and other, other ways. But look, anything you give to the Lord, it's a, that's a good thing. Money, time, whatever. How about this? Uh, the, just the effort and the sacrifices and what it takes to be a disciple. Look at Mark chapter 10. You know, I've preached on this a lot, and, and you guys know, I think we're all on the same page here, but somebody doesn't have to be a dedicated disciple of Jesus Christ to be saved and go to heaven, right? That's The Bible's, I think, very, very clear on that. There's, there's people that are disciples, and they give everything for the Lord, and they're very diligent, and they want to do better, and they want to keep growing. And then there are some people who, you know, they got saved, but they still struggle, and they don't uh, accomplish a whole lot for the Lord. They're unfruitful and barren, the Bible would say. Uh, but, the, uh, but the Bible says here in Mark chapter 10, look at verse 28. Then Peter began to say unto him, all right, he's talking to Jesus. He says, Lo, we have left all and have followed thee. And Jesus answered and said, Verily I say unto you, There is no man that hath left house or brethren or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or lands for my sake and the gospels, but he shall receive an hundredfold now in this time houses and brethren, and sisters, and mothers, and children, and lands, with persecutions, and in the world to come, eternal life. Now, there's a whole lot to unpack in that verse, but you get the point. Hey, there's nobody that's going to give up those things for the Lord, who God is not going to reward in this life. Now, those rewards, that hundredfold reward might not be what you're thinking it's going to be, but if you give your life to the Lord, He's going to reward you in ways that you never could have fathomed uh, would have been a, would be a huge blessing and a hundredfold blessing on your life, but not only that, in eternity to come, or I would say even in the millennial kingdom, there's going to be rewards that are given to those who sacrificed on this earth. So you say, well, if you're going to heaven, if you're going to go to heaven anyway, why, you know, isn't that just a license to steal? I mean, to uh, uh, to keep on sinning and and a license to do whatever you want? You know, this is the accusation that's always made. Well, you're just giving people a license to sin and steal and to cheat and to lie and do just do everything wicked because you're teaching this this uh, this grace. Right. Well, I'm not teaching it. The Bible <laughs> teaches it. I'm just showing what the Bible says. Uh, but actually, the truth is, uh, you know, there are people that will uh, continue in those sins. But in the millennial kingdom, they're going to lose their reward. They don't have the rewards. OK, in this life, their life's going to be miserable. They're going to be, you know, all these things that are going to be like, man, why? Why can't I keep things together? Why don't I have that peace in my heart? Why don't I have because you're bucking against the Lord and you're not living for him. You're still saved. Right. But you're, you don't have those blessings. But the person who decides to live for the Lord and to sacrifice and to, and to be a disciple and to, and to serve the Lord with everything he's got. Bible says you're going to be rewarded in this life and in the life to come. And so, uh, so somebody would say, man, what a waste. You know, I remember when we went to uh, uh, Bible, college, Bible college, there were a lot of people who had stories when they came that said, uh, you know, their parents weren't saved. And they had to talk them into letting them come to Bible college. And they said that when they went to Bible college, their parents were like, you're never going to be anything. You're going to go into the ministry. Now, unfortunately, a lot of those people ended up leaving and didn't amount to anything for the Lord, unfortunately. Uh, but there are some who did. And the mentality that says, you know, why don't you go be, if you go to be a doctor, I'll pay for your school. If you go be a lawyer, I'll pay for your school. But if you're going to throw your life away into the ministry, I'm not going to pay for anything. There's lots of stories like that. I've heard, I've heard of lots of parents who treated their children that way, who said, I want to just live for the Lord. And, uh, and this isn't a message about Bible college, but, uh, but that mentality, you know, shows that they don't understand that you can't waste your life for the Lord, you know, in a negative way. You give your life to the Lord and you sacrifice. God's keeping track. God's watching. He knows what's going on and he's going to reward that uh, uh, greatly. <clears throat> okay, so it might not seem profitable, but it is. When we give our time, energy, resources to the Lord, 
uh, and are wasted for the Lord, that's a, that's a good thing. All right? And then the last one is this. It's very closely related. Okay? But I wanted to put it in a different category. When we give our time, energy, or resources to others, all right, which obviously that's a big part of minister, being a minister of the Lord is giving to other people. But when we give to others in the name of the Lord, right, we're doing it for God. We're doing it for the ministry. We're doing it uh, because God tells us to esteem others higher than ourselves and to give unto others. Uh, when we do that for the Lord and we waste ourselves and spend our resources and spend our time and spend our effort on people who don't seem worthy, they don't seem to deserve it, you know, maybe they don't even love you for it. Maybe they hate you for it, uh, for what you do for them. They, they still hate you. Uh, that's all right. That's all right. It's not a waste. You feel like it's a waste. What a waste. Why would I, in, why would I you know, give of my time and effort to that person? Well, if you're doing it in the name of the Lord, you're doing it for the right reasons, it's not uh, a waste in a, ne- in a negative sense. Look at 2 Tim- uh, Corinthians chapter 8. 2 Corinthians chapter 8. Like I said, this is very closely related. This verse could have been used in the last point as well, but 1 Corinthians chapter 8. Now, as touching things offered unto idols, we know that we have... uh, Hold on, let me see here. Make sure I got the right verse. Mm. I don't think that's right. Okay. Oh, because I'm in 1 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 8. 2 Corinthians chapter 8. Okay. Moreover, brethren, we do you to wit of the grace of God bestowed on the churches of Macedonia, how that in great trial of affliction and abundance of their joy and their deep poverty abounded unto the riches of their liberality. For to their power I bear record, yea, and beyond their power they were willing of themselves, praying us with much entreaty that we would receive the gift and take upon us the fellowship of the ministering to the saints. And this they did, not as we hoped, but first gave their own selves to the Lord and unto us uh, by the will of God, insomuch that we desire Titus that he... Uh, had be, uh, that uh, um, sorry as he had begun, so he would also finish in you the same grace also. So the Church of Macedonia, what he's saying is they wanted so badly to to help those in need. All right, and so they they begged Paul to say, "Hey, take this and go help those churches that are in great need." And they did it to the point of their poverty. Like, but they they were joyful about it. They were happy about it. Hey, we want to be a blessing. We want to help those people. And they gave and some people would say, "No, you need to look out for yourself." I mean, don't waste the money. Don't don't waste all that. But they were giving it to be a blessing to others. And Paul here is saying, "Man, they gave and they're much uh, libera- liberality, right? They're uh, liberal. If that's the only way that it's as a Christian, it's okay for you to be liberal." <laughs> Okay, when it has to do with giving to the Lord's work. (laughs) Otherwise, we're not liberals. (laughs) But anyway, uh, but here they gave, and uh, and they gave greatly, but it wasn't a waste. Or it was a waste, but but in in the good way. All right? Paul also gave of his time and his energy and his supplies to people. 2 Corinthians, uh, you're still in that book. Let's go to chapter 12. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, look at verse 15. I love the Apostle Paul's attitude here. And he says, I will very gladly spend and be spent for you. Look at this part. Though the more abundantly I love you, the less I be loved. Now that's, doesn't that seem like a waste? Like pouring out your love on somebody who, the more you love them, the more they hate you. But isn't that what Jesus taught? You know, he give to the, love your enemies and and give to them that despitefully use you and, and all that. And so, uh, uh, so Paul's saying, look, I will gladly spend and be spent for you. Well, why? that's a waste, Paul. Don't you know that's, that's a waste. You're a, you're a Hebrew of Hebrews. You should know better. <laughs> you know, they, uh, uh, they knew how to spend their money wisely, you know, and, uh, and here he was just wasting himself. But he says, I'll gladly do it, right? Why? Well, he knows that it's, it's going to serve a greater uh, purpose. Philippians 2, 
uh, verse 3 says, Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory, but in lowliness of mind let each esteem other better than themselves. I just preached uh, yesterday in Iola on the concept of esteeming others higher than ourselves. And the Bible says, look, if you don't go through life concerned about your own vain glory, right? doesn't mean anything, but you're just lifting yourself up or whatever. No, what God will, requires us to do, wants us to do, is, is to esteem others higher than ourselves. Right? I doesn't mean we don't love ourselves enough to take care of ourselves and feed ourselves and, and get sleep. We do all those things, right? In fact, that's another thing that uh, uh, sleep sometimes seems like a waste. Doesn't it? I mean, like, man, I could get so much done if I didn't sleep. These, but it's not. If you don't get sleep, you're going to pay for it the next day, or you know, or you're not going to be as productive or whatever. So, sleep and rest uh, can actually be a good thing. All right, but uh, but sometimes you have got to, for the sake of the Lord, the sake of the ministry or whatever, you might have to endure sometimes going without sleep. I'm sure the Apostle Paul did that, but he said, "I'll gladly spend and be spent for you." So this is something uh, that we need to keep in consideration. All right, so here's a conclusion. There's no doubt that we all can work on not being wasteful, you know, in, in ways that I've mentioned already. We're not doing, not involved in time wasters, not wasting money, not wasting food. Uh, we could certainly get better at that. Although, in the scheme of things, you know, those things aren't nearly as important, you know, as the ministry and the, and the work of the Lord. But here's the thing, in the work of the Lord, you can waste all you want, you know. You understand what I'm saying, it's not really wasting, but you can give and give and give and others can say, why are you doing that? Why are you wasting your time? Why are you wasting your resources? Why are you wasting your energy, right? You're not even getting anything for it. Well, yes, I am. <laughs> you know, you just don't understand that, but really I'm, I'm getting, and I say I, we, all of us who do that, well, when we give ourselves, when we, when we spend and are spent for others, the rewards are great. And there's no, nothing uh, that is negative about that at all. All right. So uh, go ahead and in, the fle in our flesh, in our daily life, work on not being wasteful as much as you can. I think that's good and that's wise and that'll help you uh, have more resources. But when it comes to the Lord's work, don't be so concerned about like, well, I don't know. You know, that could have been sold to the poor or, or no, we shouldn't do that. We, uh, uh, yeah, that could have been sold and given to the poor or, 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 you know, that energy could be spent elsewhere, something more profitable or whatever. Pfft, forget about all that stuff and just give of yourself and your time and your resources. Give liberally. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word and thank you for calling us to the work wherein you've called us. And we know that many are called, but few are chosen, Lord. So I pray that you would choose uh, this group of folks here and uh, choose uh, us and use us as vessels unto honor. Help us to be disciples and uh, to give of ourselves and to gladly spend and be spent for you, Lord. And we know that if we do that, you'll bless us for it in ways that we'll may never understand uh, until we get into eternity. But I pray, Lord, that you be glorified by us, by our lives, and by the work of this church. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.